I know a lot of you, a lot of you are probably confused by my takes on Triple H over the years. You're like, you call him God. And yes, he is God, ugh, on everything that is in the books of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. It is sacrilegious to put any other gods before thee. Because it is. Like he is the patron saint of both the Click and the Breakfast Club. The authority. I could go on and on and on. A man that demonstrated the ability to manifest many miracles over the years in terms of seven-figure payouts for WrestleMania matches. Like, praise God. Like, who else could maneuver that type of magnificence? Sting's debut match in WWE. Who does he face? God. <laughs> Who does God beat? Sting. Hunter is he. He is Hunter. You get the freaking drift, right? But I know a lot of WWE fans, wrestling fans in general, have held the opinion, and not for unfounded reasons, because I certainly have shared them over the years that Vince McMahon, for all he's done for professional wrestling, for sports entertainment, good, bad, otherwise, that creatively he was old, he was washed up, he was impatient, and he was out of touch. And the quicker that he would get out of the way, the quicker he would step to the side, let somebody else be in charge of creative, the better off the show had a chance of not totally sucking. Whether that's Raw, SmackDown, whatever, right? And naturally, that's all true. Like, do you want angry, doesn't give a fuck grandma, or grandpa, excuse me, excuse me, booking your damn wrestling in 2023 in their late 70s? I don't think so. Like, Vince lost the Midas touch a long time ago, right? Like, and certainly understandable, it created an environment in the WWE roster that a lot of people are just kind of there to get by, get the paycheck, not really try to rock the boat, right? Not really try to go above and beyond, try to figure out how to maneuver in the corporate world. Everything was at Vince's will. It was at Vince's whim. And it's just not a healthy environment for people to work in. And you're never going to get the best out of everybody in that environment. You're just not. And as a byproduct, a lot of people have been chomping at the bit for Hunter to take over. They're like, well, Triple H can take over WWE's creative officially and be free from the tyranny of Vince Kennedy McMahon. Things are going to change, my God damn it. And a lot of people that were saying that were the ones that will sit there and stand NXT to kingdom fucking come even though it does barely half the ratings of Raw every week and about a third of the ratings of freaking SmackDown. But NXT, right? That That's the brand. That's your future. That's what wrestling should be like in WWE in the 21st century. And I get it, right? Because Vince has been there for so long and you see so much of the dumb shit that he's put forward over the years that people convince themselves that anything would be better than him. And let me be clear, just change for the sake of change sometimes can be productive and helpful. You know, and there were some doubts, and I certainly had them over the past year plus, as Vince had stepped aside, you know, resigned his position, then came back in just to orchestrate the sale to Endeavor so he could make a shit ton of money. Like, as long as as he had a chance or any type of reporting authority over WWE, he was going to have his schnoz in Big Nose's business. But it sounds like our Emanuel has said, like, Vince is not doing that. He is not there. And that Triple H is the creative guy going forward, which has all types of fans happy and excited. And I say, why? Why? Well, you're going to get more coherent storytelling. That's true. I, I would generally directionally say that is true. 
you're going to see more consistent pushes where it's not you put somebody forward and then they fall off the face of the earth. That may or may not be true. We don't have enough of a history over an extended period of time in the main roster spots to say that affirmatively or negatively for Triple H at this point. But just because some of these stories run longer and have more coherence doesn't mean this shit's automatically going to be better. Like, Hunter kind of lost his way in recent years. And he started getting this wet dream about fucking indie-rific wrestling with a high production value, hence what created NXT. And that shit just isn't the level of draw that you would associate with WWE. And the problem with that is, is that when you look at Triple H, a lot of that shit carries over to the main roster and especially carries over in terms of the chosen ones of Triple H and the people that he has chosen to push. And a lot of these people are just boring as fuck. Like, don't get me wrong. In terms of in-ring performer, when he's not doing the stupid chop stuff, like, I appreciate Gunther's work because I can actually take the dude seriously. He's not just flipping and flopping around like a dumb dick, right? But he is a fucking charisma vacuum. The next piece of charisma he will get would be the first one in his damn life. No disrespect, but come on, we got to fucking see this, right? And so many of these other people like Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Laneface and fucking Shitsy Black Shit. Who gives a fuck what they're called? All of these talents that you look at time after time after time and you say, these are the people that he chooses to push and they couldn't get fucking over if you gave him a hundred story head start. Just because the person at the top is different doesn't automatically mean shit is going to be better. And for those that are going to say, well, what about your tribal chief in that story? Well, last time I checked, the first couple, year and a half, two years of that was under Vince McMahon's reign. For some of you that are talking about, oh, it's kind of screwing the pooch now a little bit. It's jumped the shark. Well, that's happened under God's reign. I'm just saying it's happening in God's kingdom, not Vince's. When you look at the Cody Rhodes story, like they've done well to feature him, to make you falsely believe that he's a bigger deal than he really is, but it works to a degree, right? However, when you look at the fundamental way that they present Cody Rhodes, it's kind of fucking stupid. And the stories that they've utilized for him are largely fucking stupid. Those haven't happened under Vince McMahon. Those have happened under Triple H. Right? Right? I'm just saying. And when you think about like, hey, look at how hot Sami Zayn in the bloodline was for a period of time. Absolutely fucking was. And then once you got past the Elimination Chamber, once you got past WrestleMania, what happened with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn? Look, change is refreshing and change is nice. But if the shit that Triple H wrote, produced, booked, was so great, how come I watch so little of it now? I watch the pay-per-views and maybe clips of SmackDown monthly, and that's it. I don't watch Raw. Even when I try to tune in and watch Raw, within 20 to 30 minutes, I'm bored to fucking tears. And I thought it just used to be the old Vince McMahon would get a show handed to him, he'd tear the whole thing up and rewrite the entire damn thing in the last couple hours and you could fucking see it consistently. No, the shit is just boring as hell. And it's still boring as hell under Hunter. 75 to 80% of SmackDown most weeks is boring as shit. And I don't, don't even get me started on NXT. Look, y'all can sit there and praise God all you want because he is God after all, God damn it! Well, I have no other false idols before him. However, He's God, but that doesn't make him God's gift of fucking booking. Because, you know, the pay-per-views have been solid. I'll give them that. They mostly have it. They really have been. But, like, the week-to-week, -week, the episodic television? I don't feel that much of a difference, and that's why I hardly watch anymore. And Newsflash, especially when it comes to Raw, I'm not the only one. 